How are you all? Hope you are doing good. Okay, so we are in the second part of our lesson, an extraordinary unit man. We have seen the first part about Abdul Kalam in our last class, and we are going to see the remaining lesson today. What have we seen in our last class? Shall we go recap? Okay, so Abdul Kalam, uh, he was studying in an engineering college. By the time there was a storm in his village, in his little town of Samishwaram, so his father he lost all his belongings. He is calling Abdul Kalam uh, to come home. So he didn't have money, so he uh, just kept his book in a shop and he bought the money and he came back. After that, he just recalling this incident when he visited Madras Institute of Technology. All these were happened when he was in uh, when he was uh, in, a, in his childhood. So uh, after what happened, so he got fascinated by see, seeing the plight of sea girls. Uh, since he was living in Rameshwaram and it was, it was a coastal town, and uh, by seeing the plight of sea girls, he was fascinated to study aeronautical engineering. But he couldn't make it uh, because he was not selected in Indian Air Force. He was staying in ninth place. Only eight out of twenty-three was selected. And after that, he went into the research ministry of defence and he got high positions over there. And under them, there was a team who were developing satellites and missiles for India. So, the, having these missiles, India was uh, just becoming a developed country. So, it was not a developed country; it was becoming a developed country in this, in this period. So, before we get into the lesson, we see what are the topics that we have in our class today. See here. The first one is calipers. C A L L I P E R S. Calipers. Meaning of calipers is a metal brace strapped to the leg to give support. A metal brace strapped to the leg to give support. And the next one, indelible. I N D E L I B L E. Indelible. And as this, something that cannot be erased. Something which cannot be erased. See the third one, imam. Imam is a Muslim priest or a leader is called Imam. Imam is a Muslim priest or a Muslim leader. And the next one is self-reliant. Self-reliant means independent. Self-reliant, independent. So the meaning is some calipers, a metal brace strapped to the leg to give support. Indelible, something which cannot be erased. Imam, a Muslim priest or leader. Self-reliant. Independent. Okay, so we are getting to the lesson now. I will read the lesson once. You can uh, just listen. See, it is the continuing of our last class. Materials developed were used for different uses. A doctor from Hyderabad visited his laboratory. He picked up a material called carbon carbon, developed a agrimisai. He found it light and showed his patients. Handicapped children, handicapped children wearing heavy metal calipers. So, see in the first uh, sentence, which means materials developed for materials developed are used for different uses. So, we have seen in our last class under the scheme, uh, there were so many missiles that were developed for India's defense, uh, which means defense army. So, these missiles like Agni, Prithvi, and all the snag and all. These missiles were used for different purposes. So, these missiles have been developed for India's defense technology. But these missiles were used for multi purposes. That are like a doctor from Hyderabad visited his laboratory. So, once a doctor who was working in a Hyderabad hospital visited the laboratory of uh, Dr. A. P. J. Abdul Kalam. So, when he visited, what happened? He picked up a material called carbon carbon developed for Agni missile. So when he was going through all the materials that were there in the laboratory, he picked up a material called carbon carbon. The material name is carbon carbon. So the doctor is picking up the material called carbon carbon carbon. Uh, that the carbon carbon material was designed for uh, Agni missile. So it was designed for Agni missile, and he just took the material and he found it light and showed his patients. Handicapped children wearing heavy metal calipers. So, by seeing this, he found all these materials were very light. So, what he did is he immediately took Abdul Kalam with him to his hospital and he showed all his patients to Abdul Kalam. What happens in the hospital? So, handicapped children wearing heavy metal calipers. So, Abdul Kalam could see there were so many handicapped children, they were having heavy metal calipers. What is the meaning of calipers? They say that 
medical brace strapped to the leg to give support. So, handicapped children, so those who are unable to walk, they were having the support of this caliper machine and they were trying to walk. Since the caliper was very heavy, when Abdul Kalam was seeing the children, since the caliper was very heavy, they were dragging and moving. So, it was training for the children and they were unable to walk properly very easily too. So, Abdul Kalam found all these children wearing heavy metal calipers. So now uh, he was thinking he should do something for those children. So what is he doing? We we'll see here. Three weeks. In three weeks, Kalam designed much lighter calipers. Parents had tears in eyes. Kalam left at end level mark at Anna University. During his long walk, he noticed a banyan tree and remarked, we should give support to the roots that are trying to touch the soil. If we allow to grow horizontally, it will grow strong. So, after that, what happens? So, once he had seen the children in the hospital who were wearing heavy metal calipers, in three weeks, what Kalam did is he designed much lighter calipers. So, he saw all those calipers were heavy. So, he designed much lighter calipers for all these handicapped children. So, then he gave these calipers to the children and they were very easily walking. So, it was very light, so they were easily walking. And by seeing this, these parents, they had tears in their eyes by seeing their children because these many days they were feeling difficult in walking. Now, they are easy to walk. And parents had tears in, in their eyes because of these incidents. So, Kalam left an intelligent mark at Anna University. Not only this incident, there was another incident too, that is, uh, Kalam left intelligent mark. Intelligent means something that cannot be erased, something that cannot be taken out from our minds and thoughts. So, uh, in Anna University, what he did? He just uh, marked, he, he was like he was doing something in Anna University. What is that? During his long work, he noticed a bunny tree and remarked, we should give support to the roots that are trying to touch the soil. So, he was saying to the Vice Chancellor of Anna University that we should, by seeing the Bani entry, it was trying to, uh, trying hard to touch the soil. The roots were trying hard to touch the soil. So, he was saying to the Vice Chancellor that we should give support to the roots that are trying to touch the soil. So, he was feeling pity for even the trees. So, uh, by saying this, he was having a mark, remarkable mark in Anna University. If we allow to grow horizontally, it will grow strong. So why he said this? Because if the trees are allowed to uh, touch the soil, then only it will grow horizontally and it will be, give shape for everyone. So this is what he had done in Anna University. So there were two incidents. One is he made light metal calipers for the children who were handicapped. And the second is in Anna University, he remarked that uh, they should give support to the roots that are trying to touch the soil so that it will grow, so that it will grow horizontally and it will give shape for everyone who are living there. So children, uh, we will move on to the next part. Kalam, the architect of India's missile program and best known for his key role in India's nuclear tests in Pakistan in the desert of Rajasthan in 1997. Same year, Kalam was awarded nation's highest civilian award, Bharat Ratna, for scientific research. Amazing is that he found time to pursue his love for Tamil poetry and to play the Veena. On 25th July 2002, Kalam was sworn in as India's 11th president. Travel long road from his little hamlet of Rameshwaram to the Rashtrapati Hall. Simplicity remained. His long silvery hair, long sleeve blue shirt are familiar to us. He often quotes from Bahar Gita. The family, the family traditionally took part in temple festivals. Kalam recites both Quran and Bahar Gita. He is also familiar with Christian scriptures and the Bible. P.L.P. Shafi, Kalam's schoolmate and the Imam of the local mosque, A.C.M. Nur ul Huda, attended his swearing ceremony. The priest had brought Prasad while the Imam offering a namaz. Kalam writes about this vision in Wings of Fire. Freedom. If we are not free, 
no one will respect us. Development, we should see ourselves as a developed nation, self-reliant and self-assured. So, we see what is given here. In the first kind of what we have, Kalam, the architect of India's missile program and best known for his key role in India's nuclear test in program in the desert of Rajasthan in 1997. So, what happens here is, Kalam was pretended that he was the architect of India's missile program and he was best known for his key role. What was the key role he played? He played the key role in India's nuclear test in program in the desert of Rajasthan in 1997. And then, on the same year, which means in 1997, Kalam was awarded nation's highest civilian award. So, he was given an award that is nation's highest civilian award that is Bharat Ratna, which is the highest civilian award, nation's highest civilian award is Bharat Ratna. So, he was awarded Bharat Ratna in recognition for his contribution of scientific research. So, the contribution that he had given for scientific research. So, in order to recognize that, they were given him the highest civilian award that is Bharat Ratna. And not only all this, the amazing thing which he had done is that uh, besides all this, he had just uh, he had some time to write Tamil poetry. He was having time to write Tamil poetry and to play the Veena. So he learned to play the Veena as well as alongside he learned to write Tamil poetry. Which means he started writing Tamil poetry too. On 20th of July 2002, on 20th of July 2002, Kalam was sworn in as India's 11th president. So, when did he become the president of India? Which means he was the 11th president of India. When did he become India's president? On 25th July 2022. Sworn, uh, which was the of swear, taking a promise that he will do everything for the country. Travel long road from this little hamlet of Tamil to the Rashtrapati Pound. So, after becoming the president, he had to move to Rashtrapati Pound. So, he from this little hamlet of Rameshwar, from this the village, which means little hamlet means the village that he resides in Rameshwar. So, from the village of Rameshwar, he had moved to Rashtrapati Pound. Rashtrapati Pound, we know that it was the grandest residence, right? So, he had been moved to Rashtrapati Pound after becoming India's president, which means after 25th July 2002. Though uh, he had become a president, what happened? Simplicity reminds so he was a man of simplicity, we all know. Though he had become a president, he was just keeping on as he was uh, uh, following his simplicity. That is, what were the simplicities that we can see in him? His long silvery hat, long sleeve blue shirt, or the familiar things that uh, he was a simple man for all of us. He often quotes from Bhagavad Gita. So, though he was a devout Muslim, a very religious Muslim, he was a very religious Muslim, though he was a Muslim, he often quotes from, so he often used to say quotes from the Bhagavad Gita, which is the religious book of Hindus. So, he was a Muslim, but he said quotes from the uh, Hindus, Hindus religious book, that is Bhagavad Gita. And the family traditionally took part in temple festivals. So, according to his brother, uh, his family traditionally lived in the ancestral home. Now, they were uh, actually they lived in the ancestral home, and they used to take part in temple festivals and all. And they used to pray in the temples and all. Not only in the mosque, they were a Muslim family, but they used to pray in the temples and all. Kalam recites both Quran and Bhagavad Gita. Being a Muslim, he recites he prays with both Quran and Bhagavad Gita. He is also familiar with the state scriptures and the Bible. So, here we are seeing that he was uh, having, uh, showing his love for both Muslim and Hinduism, for both the religion, religion. And here we can see that he was showing his love for Christianity too, that he knows all these Christian scriptures and the Bible too. He was familiar with even the Bible, what was said in the Bible. Because he was doing all his schooling, all his studies in uh, Christian institutions. So, he was showing his love for even Christian uh, religion too. P.L.D. Shastri Kalam's school bed and the Imam of the local mosque, ACM Nur Ul Uda attended the swearing ceremony. So, among those all who attended the swearing ceremony, so the swearing ceremony is when he became the India's president. So, this ceremony is called the swearing ceremony. So, uh, among those all who attended this swearing ceremony, uh, P.L.D. Shastri, that was 
because he was actually a priest. Uh, he was Kalam schoolmate. He was a Hindu priest and he was Kalam schoolmate. And the Imam of local mosque. Imam, we are saying that where the meaning of Imam is the priest or a leader, the Muslim priest or a leader. And this P.M.P. Shasti is a Hindu priest. He was Kalam schoolmate. And the Imam of the local mosque. Imam of the local, which means the priest of the local mosque. His name is Asian No Ul Kuda. Asian No Ul Kuda. So these both have attended this very ceremony of uh, APJ Abdul Kalam when he became the 11th president of India. And when they attended the ceremony, normally when friends used to uh, friends used to attend the ceremonies of their friends, what, what do they used to do? They used to give them gifts and all. So what did they do? They, the priest had brought prasad while the imam offering a lama. So this priest, which means P.L.P. Shanti, the Hindu priest, he brought prasad, which means he prayed, he worshipped and he brought prasad, which means in Tamil we used to say prasad. So he brought prasad for the Pradevi Chapter Kalam while the Imam offering a namas. And what this Imam, uh, what this Muslim priest did, he offered a namas, a prayer, reciting a prayer in Muslim is called namas. So this Hindu priest brought Prasad after praying for Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, he brought Prasad for APJ Abdul Kalam and this Imam brought, uh, he offered a namas for APJ Abdul Kalam. And Kalam writes about his vision in Wings of Fire. So in his autobiography, uh, Kalam's autobiography is Wings of Fire. So in his autobiography, Kalam writes about his vision uh, in his autobiography that is Wings of Fire. And what did he write in that? In this autobiography, he mentions that about freedom and development. What is freedom? Freedom is if you are not free, no one will respect you. So when he quoted about freedom, he used to say that if we are not free to do anything, if we are not free to drink, if we are not free to uh, uh, do anything what we wish, we will not be respected. No one will respect us. And about develop, development, he said that we should see ourselves as a developed nation, self-reliant and self-assured. So, uh, being an Indian, we should see ourselves, which means we should see our country as a developed nation. Now, we are in we are a developing country. We are not a developed country now. So, we have to see ourselves, which we Indians must be in a developed country, self-reliant and self-assured. So, we must have hope and we must know uh, what we are doing and we must uh, make our country a uh, developed country. So, we have seen about freedom and development uh, and we see what is still said about. So, if you are, India must stand up to the world we must be strong not only as a military power but also as an economic power. His advice to the young people is to dream, dream and dream. Dreams should be converted to thoughts and thoughts should lead to actions. Scholar, poet, musician, rocket scientist, president and Ed is in the classroom that he is most comfortable doing what he loves, teaching. His dream to focus on the children of India, to ignite in their minds a love for science and the nation's mission and develop India. So, what has he said here? So, we are seeing that uh, he had said about freedom. Freedom means if you are not free, no one will respect us and India must be a developed country. And here, India must stand up to the world. Which means India must be a developed country and stand up to the world. We must be very strong. We Indians must be very strong. Not only in what way we should be strong, not only as a military power. We think that if we are strong in the in our military power, that we are strong. So not only as a military power, but also as an economic power. Because there are so many people still who are who are very under each level, under the great level. So we should grow with economic power, not only as a military power, with economic power too. And his advice to the young people, his advice to the excess of India is dream, dream and dream. What does dream mean? You know that sitting uh, like while we sleep, we used to dream. Like, so now the dream he mentions, he says that dream, dream and dream. Dreams should be converted into thoughts. So all your dreams about future. 
for making this India a developed country. So for, for developing a nation, you should dream more. So all your dreams must take in the form of thoughts. Must take the form of thoughts. So all your dreams should be converted into thoughts. So dream should not be banished away only as dreams. It should be converted into thoughts. And what the thoughts must do? Thoughts should lead to actions. So dream, dream and dream. Dreams must take take you into the next level of uh, taking it into thoughts. So dreams should be converted into thoughts and thought must lead to action. So all your actions should show that who you are and what you are doing for this country, how you are developing this country. And this APJ Abdulkalam, Dr. APJ, APJ Abdulkalam, he was a scholar, he was a well studied man and a poet. So he wrote, he wrote Tamil poetry and he was playing Veena too. So a uh, scholar, poet, musician, he played Veena. Rocket scientist. So, uh, so those who are playing many roles in his life, tech scholar, poet, musician, rocket scientist, president, and Ed is in the classroom that is most comfortable doing what he loves, that is teaching. He was a very good teacher and extraordinary teacher. So he loved teaching. That he felt most comfortable in the classroom that he he wanted to do teaching. So by being a scholar, a poet who wrote Tamil poetry, a musician who played Veena and a rocket scientist who made uh, like uh, missiles, who developed missiles and satellites for our nation and the president of India, 11th president of India and is in the classroom, he was a very good teacher. What was his dream? So Abdul Kalam's dream was to focus on the children of India. So he was trying to focus only on the children of India, that is younger, younger age children, to ignite in their minds a love for science. So what did he want to do with the children? He wanted to ignite in their minds a love for science. So these children, they should show their love for science and they should do something for making our country a developed country. So uh, and a mission and a nation's mission and develop India. So our dream is to make our India as a developed country. So his focus was to uh, focus was on the children of India and to ignite in their minds a love for science. They have to show love for science and the nation's mission. A developed India. Our nation's mission is becoming a developed India. Okay children, I hope that you are clear with the lesson and we will See a short recap from the beginning till the end. So there was a storm in the little town of Rameshwaram and Abdul Kalam's father, he just uh, lost all his belongings, all his income shows and he called Abdul Kalam who was studying engineering in Madras Institute of Technology and he asked him to come home. By seeing this telegram sent by his father, Abdul Kalam didn't know what to do because he didn't have money with him. So he went to a bookshop and he thought of selling a book that was awarded for him by Vice Chancellor of Madras Institute of Technology. So he showed this book to the bookshopper and he asked him to give money. The bookshopper saw this book and she saw whether it is worth or not. So when it was uh, when he saw it, it was written on the first page that it was awarded to Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam for this excellence in first year of engineering. So by seeing this, the bookshop is asking Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam that who is this person? Kalam is replying that it's me. And he is asking the story for selling this book. And hearing the story of Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, uh, the shopkeeper said that I will keep this book with me. I will keep this very safe for you. And you can, I will give you a loan but I will give you a loan for going back to your place. But you can get this book from me whenever you need. And this was the incident when he studied in engineering and uh, Abdul Kalam recalled this incident when he was visited Madras Institute of Technology once he had become the president. So, Abdul Kalam was born on 25th July 1931 in the little town of Rameshwaram. His father was having a boat and by uh, just having a boat he was uh, giving this boat on rents for earning for his family. And Abdul Kalam knew that if the money which his father earned was not sufficient for running the family. So when he was a young boy itself, he sold newspapers to support his family's 
income. And after that, what happened? Since he was a coastal town, he used to sit and see the flight of seagulls when he was a young boy. And he remembers his childhood that he spent with his mother and he used to sit on the floors and all. So, uh, by seeing the flight of girls, he was fascinated that he should study aeronautical engineering, that he wants to become a pilot. So, for that, what he did is, after doing his school, schooling, uh, he had gone to uh, which means uh, uh, he was studying in St. Joseph's College of Arts and Science. So once he finished his degree, he went to study Aeronautical Engineering in Madras Institute of Technology. He had completed his Aeronautical Engineering course. What did, what did he want to do after that? He wanted to try in Indian Air Force for becoming a pilot. And he wrote his exam too, but he couldn't make it. He was disappointed that he couldn't make it because he was standing in 9 positions. Only 8 out of 25 were selected for Indian Air Force. So finally, he couldn't make it into Indian Air Force. So what he did is, he was disappointed but he didn't give up. So immediately he took up a job in Research Ministry of Defence. And uh, by showing his hard work and working very hard with so much of effort, what he did is, he reached the higher positions. And under them, because he reached the higher positions, under them there was a team who were developing satellites and missiles for the country, for India. And uh, such missiles were like Agni, Prithvi, Nag and all. Uh, so these missiles, uh, actually what happens is these missiles were used for the development of our country. So for making India less dependent on another nation while it comes to defense, okay, defense army. And what happened after that? What uh, happened is, uh, for Agni missile, they were having some materials. So the materials that are developed for these missiles were used for different purposes. So once a doctor from Hyderabad, uh, in a hospital he was working, so this doctor visited the laboratory of Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. So when he visited, he saw all the materials that have been developed for the missiles. So when he saw the, the materials that were developed for, for Agni missile, he was shocked that the materials were very light. So what he did is, he uh, took Abdul Kalam to his hospital and he showed in the patient that uh, they were very handicapped. So uh, what those handicapped children did is, uh, they were having canicus. Canicus means the, uh, uh, for the handicapped children, they used to have a uh, machine that supports the uh, leg for walking. So the canicus that the handicapped children were having uh, were wearing was very hard. It was very heavy. So they were feeling difficulty in walking. So, since they were dragging and uh, moving, they felt the pain in their leg. So by seeing this, Abdul Kalam decided to uh, uh, design a light material tanker for those children. So in three weeks, he designed light material, light material caliber for those children and the parents of those children were very happy. So this is one incident which he recalls. And the next incident is uh, when he was a professor in uh, Madras Institute of Technology when, in Anna University. When he was a professor in Anna University, he was walking uh, for a long fall. When he was walking, he saw a banyan tree which was trying to touch the soil. So the roots were trying to touch the soil. So he said to the vice chancellor of Anna University that these roots are trying to touch the soil. We should give support for them. Because only if we give support for them, it will grow horizontally and it will grow more and give shape for everyone. So this is the second incident. So after that, Kalam was heralded as the architect of India's missile program and he was best known for his key role uh, in India's nuclear tests in Kokram in the desert of Rajasthan in 1997. And on the same year, that is in 1997, he was given the highest nation's highest civilian award, uh, that is Bharat Ratna, for his recognition of contribution to scientific research. So in order to recognize the contribution that he had done for scientific research, he was awarded uh, the nation's highest civilian award, that is Bharat Ratna in 1997. And then on 25th of July, on 25th of July 2002, he had become the president of India, which means 11th president of India. So he was taking a promise that he will do all his, uh, all his responsibilities for making India a developed country. What's amazing is, is that beyond all these things, so when he was doing all these things for the nation, he found time to write in his Tamil poetry and to play Veena. And after that, uh, he was actually was actually Muslim. You know that Abdul Kalam is a Muslim. Though he was a Muslim, he recited prayers from 
Quran as well as Bhagavad Gita. Not only Muslim Quran, he was familiar with Quran and Bhagavad Gita and Christian scriptures too because he was studying in completely in Christian institutions. And his family also took part in all the religious festivals, that is temple festivals and all. So according to his family, his brother, uh, they were living in their ancestral homestead. And among those who attended these swearing ceremonies, that when he became the 11th president of India, there were two people. So one is a Hindu and the other is a Muslim. One is P. M. Shanti, he was a Hindu priest. And the next is Nurul, uh, Nurul Huda, he is Muslim priest. Okay. So these both have participated in the that uh, Abdul Ram invited these both and these both have offered what they could do for Abdul Kalam. So uh, the Hindu priest, he had given prasad from the temple, he prayed and he had given prasad for Dr. Abdul Kalam and this Muslim priest, he was offering a namaz for him. And after that, in his autobiography, he was writing about freedom. That is his autobiography, Sleeps of Fire. So uh, in his autobiography, he was writing about freedom and development. Freedom is if we are not free, we will not be respected. And about development this, we should make this India as a developed country. We should be self-reliant and self-assured. Okay. And self-independent too. And after that, here we see that India must be uh, the country who is well developed. And not only as a military power. Well developed means not only as a military power, but as an economic power. We should make poor people to come in a range of at least average for the rich. And after that, if this is advice was to young people is dream, dream and dream. So your thoughts, thought, uh, your dream must take the conversion of thoughts. And your thoughts must lead to actions. And after that, we are seeing that he was a, he was not only a scholar, he was not only a scholar, but a poet, a musician, a rocket scientist, president, and head inside a classroom. He was a very beautiful and well dedicated teacher too, since he loved teaching. And after that, his dream, what was his dream? His dream was to focus on the children of India, to ignite in their minds a love for science, for this nation's mission. What is the nation's mission? mission? To make this India a developed country. Okay, children, I hope that you are well thorough with this lesson. Now, we will see what is homework and activity for twins. So, your yeah, homework is already we have written the short answers, synonyms and antonyms. So, today we will write detailed answers and vocabulary. That is the exercises which is given in the vocabulary. An activity, same activity I gave you in our last class also, but so many of you did do it. But I want you to do it. I want every one of you to uh, make an attempt of this essay. That is, write an essay on Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. Okay, children, I hope that you all will be writing good and you all will be writing neat in your class work. Okay, we meet you in your next class. Thank you all.